Now the other side to the A100 pickup truck is you're the first one to arrive at an accident scene. In other words, you're right here. If you hit anything, there's not a lot of protection. I had a couple of these things in Los Angeles. I always used to wear steel-toed boots, just in case, you know, that way you have a little extra margin in case somebody hit me in the front. Hey, Stevie Nani here doing the junkyard crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts. Anybody remember the Dodge A100? Well, these were built between 1964 and 1970, and to most people, the most memorable one of them all was the Little Red Wagon. Of course, this was built originally as a mid-engine exhibition and traction monster. Jay Howell and Dick Brantsner built the original one, but it turned out it liked to do that. So they said, hey, let's move back into super stocks and let Bill Maverick Golden take the command. And he turned this thing into a, uh, an exhibition um, showcase. He made lots of money over the years doing wheelies between rounds of real racing at drag strips. And his was a pickup truck, as is this one. Now here's the thing. I love Motor Trend and they never make mistakes with one exception canceling Steve Mignotti's supermodels. Just saying. If you ever watch those, there's four of them. We actually built this very little red wagon on one of those episodes. In fact, uh, this is the IMC, which is now released by Lindbergh. And if you're a good modeler, you'll get it so the doors actually open like that. And they're actually little tiny hinges. It takes quite a bit of work. But on this one here, I did some upgrades, put some Johan wheels, a Johan Hemi in it instead of the IMC piece. And the original packaging on this thing was pretty cool back in the day. There it is, 1966, this model comes out. There it is, the little red wagon. How many kids learned about A100 pickup trucks thanks to this model? What a cool thing this is. And speaking of pickup trucks, this is not an A100 van. This is an A100 pickup. Let's go around to the side and there it is right there. Now the thing is the A100 pickup truck was actually cheaper than the van by 106 bucks, but this was basically uh, as useful as a D100 pickup truck. Now here's the deal. These things are actually, they ride on a 90 inch wheelbase, whereas the D100 pickup truck rode on a 114 inch wheelbase. These are two feet shorter than a D100 pickup, but these are actually seven feet long in the bed, which is a half a foot longer than a short bed Dodge like this right here. So the utility of the A100 was equal to the, uh, the D100 full size, you know, half ton pickup truck. And again, this is a seven foot long bed in the back and it's fully capable of handling really any kind of a load that a D100 could handle, half ton pickup. Now these are fairly light, again, single wall construction. We see right here, there's no inner bed liner. There's no secondary wall. So if you threw the engine block in the back, you're gonna get a puck on the outside. But again, these are built to be fairly light. These are unit construction as well, but they're not light. Here's, here's how we can prove that. This is the 1966 Dodge pickup truck uh, catalog right here. And of course there's the A100 the D100, and we can see, you know, seven foot cargo capacity, six and a half on this puppy here. And you might wonder about weight ratings. Well, here we have it. Uh, here is, of course, the step side D100 pickup truck and the, uh, the flare side, as it were. And then right here on this page here, here, let me find this, here we go, right here. Now that is the A100 pickup truck right there. And if we look at the, uh, the blue box on the top right there, it says gross vehicle weight, the D100, 4,300 pounds up to 52. At the bottom, the A100, 3,800 up to 52. So 5,200 pound gross vehicle weight, same as a D100 half tonner. So these A100s were again, two feet shorter. And the beauty of these things was the cab forward, you're sitting over the front axle. So if you're like in a city driving through an alley or on a construction site, you can maneuver these things way tighter than you can a pickup truck with a conventional hood and a nose. Now, the only downside of these things is the fact that there's no hood, there's no way to service the engine. You can't check the oil, you can't check the coolant, nothing. You gotta go inside. Now, on this one here, the doors have carthritis. Unfortunately, unlike my little IMC model, the doors on this one open. On this one, they don't. But with that said, we can look through the windshield. Here is the radiator, and of course, there is the top of the tank. So if you want to check the oil, you got to go inside. You lift up this cover and the motor's inside. There's the slant six in this one underneath there. And uh, of course to service the engine, yeah, you got to go inside. But you know, if you can deal with that, it's not a big deal. One thing I love about these is like the uh, pickup trucks, these have the 
super stock seats. These things here are Bostrom thin lines. These were also used in 64 and 65 race Hemi Dodge and Plymouth and 68 A body Hemi cars. And yeah, all A100 pickups and vans use these seats. In fact, Jeep CJs also use this type of seat. Now the other side to the A100 pickup truck is you're the first one to arrive at an accident scene. In other words, you're right here. If you hit anything, there's not a lot of protection. I had a couple of these things in Los Angeles. I always used to wear steel-toed boots, just in case, you know, that way you'd have a little extra margin in case somebody hit me in the front. This one has been tapped here. Uh, the windshield may or may not have come out as a result of the driver coming through here. Again, these had lap belts, but no, no shoulder harnesses in these things. Um, but again, this one here is pretty thoroughly rotted. The grill is a uh, half gauge. It's not factory acid dipping. This is actually New England salt, water, and rust doing its job, reducing the gauge of the metal. Uh, and the thing with this, these were actually pretty inexpensive. These were 1,927 bucks base for the pickup truck. It was only about uh, $80 more than a conventional D100 pickup. So, you know, pretty good value. But again, the interesting thing on these is 1964, when these came out, these crazy, I call these the Sandy Duncan headlights. If you remember Sandy Duncan, she was an actress with these big eyes. And these big round headlights kind of played into the 63 Dodge Darts, the 64 Dodge Polara, and at the same time, in 1964, Dodge pickup trucks had four small lights, but for 65, the Dodge pickup truck embraced the same big, wide open, eager eye styling at the front. But again, they were seen on all of these A100s, and there were no annual upgrades or model changes, nothing. These basically were the same design, same stampings from 64 through 1970, and that's how you amortize your production tooling and maximize your profits. And again, these things weren't really luxurious in any way, shape, or form, although there was a sportsman van that uh, you could it was a passenger vehicle and it could be had with air conditioning a v8 all that kind of stuff but mostly these things were workhorses like this one right here so that's the story of the a100 pickup truck immortalized by bill maverick golden the little red wagon wheel standard did you build one of these when you were a kid i sure did and i'm still a kid i built this thing three years ago on motor trends uh steve Miotti's supercar uh, supermodels and uh, again motor trend they makes no mistakes with one exception canceling that show and junkyard crawl just saying or junkyard gold excuse me this is junkyard crawl and come back tomorrow we'll be back we're not going to stop there's more of these and we'll see you tomorrow